Hello everyone, it's Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel, Kibbethashim. So uh, welcome to episode three of the eight part series of the Allison Jr. edition. So in this one, we are going to be um, doing some sanding, which is thrilling. Um, actually, I hate it. Uh, we're going to be choosing wallpapers and we are going to do the um, assembly on the walls of the actual um, edition itself. So it should be fun. So enjoy. So I did the ceilings with gesso. This is the um, the top piece. So here's the ceiling. As you can see, it's really kind of uneven, but that's fine because I'm going to go ahead and sand that into a second coat just like we are and everything else. And I did find I have some white paint. Um, it's a white pearlescent paint, but you know, it's the ceiling. Nobody's going to look at it. So um, we'll go ahead and set this off to the side. Let it finish drying. And we will go ahead and grab one of these pieces so we can do the sanding on it. So now with this, what they want you to do is they want you to sand it until you can basically see through the paint. Okay, you're, you're going to get this so it's nice and smooth. Right now it's very rough. You probably even see if I can get the light to see how rough that is. So we're going to sand this down. So what we're going to use is sanding block. This is the easiest way to do it. Um, I get these and then once the sanding stuff wears out on it, um, I have regular sandpaper and I take um, this, which is three in one, and I just attach it on there and let it dry and it holds it on there great. So um, I have a couple different strengths of sandpaper here. I should probably replace this one. Um, yeah, I'll be right back. Give me one second. Okay, so now we are ready to sand these pieces. So with the outside pieces, and that's really the only ones we're going to sand, um, except for the ceilings. But um, what you want to do is you want to sand like in the same direction. You're thinking, oh my God, what are you doing? No, no, no. That's what you actually want to do. I'm going to start with my rough sand paper, and you want to sand it till it's transparent. You're sanding most of the paint off. Because what you were doing with that first coat of paint is you were allowing it to get in there in the fibers. And so with these, you're going to do each one of these little slats separately. Okay, so that way you can get up in here, you can get up under this. Um, Am I going to make a god awful mask on my desk? I am, but that's okay. Um, I usually have a microfiber cloth here so I can kind of get some of the, the dust off of there. But see, again, we're taking a lot of this off. So once we've sanded it with the regular um, coarse grit, then we're going to go back with the fine grit. And that's going to really get that nice and smooth. Like so. Okay, seems counterintuitive, but this is really going to smooth that down because what that first one did is it allowed it to get in there in the grain of this and swell it up and have basically all the little pieces come sticking out sort of thing that are going to stick out. And this way you're knocking those all the way back down so you have a nice smooth surface and it's already absorbed the paint so it's not going to puff those fibers up again because this is holding them up long enough for you to remove them basically. So I'm going to do this piece here and put it on fast forward um, and then uh, I'll come back to you when it's done.
this looks pretty good. Um, to say that this is my least favorite part of doing a dollhouse would be an understatement. I hate this part. Um, so I am going to take one of my scraps here and I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna fold it in half like this so I have a nice sharp edge. And I'm just gonna work it down each one of these just once just to make sure I got in those edges really good because I definitely don't want to, um, you know, have it end up obliterating some of the edge because the extra paint will put on it on the second coat, if that makes sense. That is it for that. I'm gonna go take my microfiber cloth here. I'm just gonna kind of wipe this out a bit. Get some of the extra dust out of there that I just caused. And wipe my desk off. Is this the best place to do this? No, but it's the best place to film it. So um, anyways, this is what it looks like after. So it looks like, oh my God, you totally trashed it. But trust me, it'll look much better when I put the second coat on there. So I think what I'll do, and I sometimes do this when it's a task that I hate like this, if I try to plow through all of it um, and do say all of the sanding, it's just too much. So um, I may go ahead and paint this with its second coat now that I've sanded it, just to give myself a bit of a break from sanding. Um, and then I will do the other pieces. Um, I'll do the same thing here with this part with the gesso. I'm just gonna sand it back and then I'm gonna put that other white paint on it. So I will show you all of that stuff um, when it's done. These right here, I'm not gonna sand, I don't think. Well, except a couple of them have some rough edges. I might sand those off, but um, they're just gonna get a second coat, right? Cause they're, they're a little too small and fiddly for me to be sanding, I'm not doing that. But I will give them all a second coat as well. And so once I've done all of that painting nonsense, then we will come back and actually move on to another step of putting it together, which might be fun. Um, I also, when I was at Hobby Lobby, managed to find the uh, baseboards and the crown molding. So this is the same crown molding I ended up having to use in the house. The rest of the house, it's fine. This baseboard is different because the baseboard I got that I loved was not finished like this. This has got a paint finish and I don't like it because you can't stain it. And believe me, I tried and that was just, yeah, that was not good. So um, we'll have to figure out what color we want to paint these. Probably brown, go figure, and pretend it's wood. But um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do those steps and then I will be back to you guys to put some stuff together. Okay. So everything has had its um, second coat of paint and everything's drying so that when we put it together and I you know, put painter's tape, it doesn't rip the paint off. Um, so while it dries, I went ahead and went through um, and found some stuff to use for wallpaper. So wallpaper you can use, there's dollhouse wallpapers. You can paint. Um, personally, I use scrapbook paper um, because there's a lot of very pretty scrapbook papers that lend themselves to wallpapers. So. I picked out a few of them, um, so I'll kind of show you. And what we'll do is, you know, once we um, look at these, we'll take them out to the dollhouse itself and kind of hold them. That's what I did last time, is I just kind of stuck them in the rooms um, and put them all together to see what worked next to whatever as well. Because we can think, oh, this is the best one in the world, I want to use this, but you put it next to the other one and it looks weird, so there's always a chance. Um, so I've got this one. So this is Blue Fern Studios. Um, this is from uh, Fairy Whispers. So this scale is a bit large. So I don't know that this will quite work. But oh, it's so pretty. And we have another one. This is also from Fairy Whispers. This one, the scale is a bit smaller. So this may work. Um, because I'm thinking of doing kitchen and bedroom. Um, so if I do a bedroom, this may work for that. And this is just going to be an accent wall. I'm not doing all three walls with it because that'd be a bit too much. 
So once I decide on which one of these I want to use, then we'll pick out, you know, pattern solid type stuff that goes with it. So we got that. I'll put this back this way. We have this one, same sort of thing. This one, again, the scale's pretty large and it's got, you know, other stuff on it. It's kind of pushing it as a wallpaper, but it could also look really pretty. So we'll have to look and see. Okay, so then we have, looks like I've got these all sideways. There we go. Now this one does lend itself to wallpaper. This is also um, Blue Fern. It's from Eclectic Charm. So this one's got the stripes and the scale's a bit large, but it's not too large that it wouldn't be used as a wallpaper, right? have this one. This is Stamperia. This is a damask, which I love. And the detail I like on it is that it's got this border at the bottom already. So once I put my baseboards on there, it may cover this little bottom part. But it'll still give it a nice detail. Or this detail can be up at the top and then have the crown molding up here, however it works. Um, it's also got another really nice color on the back too. So either of these would be a contender. This one's kind of iffy, but if I did a kitchen, I could do like a little accent wall in this. It would actually be kind of cute. Um, there's another one I have here that's more of a, just a regular stripe. Now this is the Cafe Parisian collection, um, and this is Ephemera Queen, but you can see how that would be a nice colorful kitchen. But again, this scale may be a little too large. So, you know, once we get it next to the regular dollhouse, the rest of it, It'll, it'll be pretty apparent pretty quickly if the scale's too large. But this I know works because I used a different color stripe somewhere in the house. I do have to make sure that I didn't use this exact one because <laughs> chances are I may have picked the, you know, the same one again. That happens. Um, so this one's graphic 45, just like those two. Um, it's from Enchanted Forest. And this one's kind of nice. It's got stripes, but they're flowers. I mean, I haven't done a really bright green like this. I did kind of a lime green in the, um, I think it's in the study. You know, obviously the back, that's a no-go. But um, then this one here is kind of pretty. And it's black with the green. So it would definitely be interesting that one on the back's way too large of a scale. But this one I really like, and I think I might have used this, but it's very Art Deco. Um, and a lot of their paper collections have these Art Deco style sheets um, in different sizes. So I've got this in other colors. So I was kind of leaning towards like greens and blue greens. This is from Steampunk Debutante collection. And then this one here, which I do love. It's a Harlequin pattern. It's from Midnight Masquerade, um, which is that one there. And then they also do patterns and solids. So even though this is clearly a pattern this is not really a solid but it reads as one so if you look at it real close you can see there's swirls and things in there um, but these make really good two other walls <laughs> so not the accent wall because that would look bizarre but um, you know these are really bright colors that'd probably be a little too bright but maybe something like this um, i don't know that i'd want the black but then again with this it might actually work. You know, I just don't know that I want a black and green room. That might be an event. So what we can do is can take these out to the um, dollhouse and see which ones look okay. We are back in the living room and hopefully the shadows won't be too horrible. They're probably going to be terrible, but um, I, just, I don't have another light I can stick out here. But anyway, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold some of the scrap of papers up and I kind of put the dollhouse a little bit of an angle um, <clears throat> so y'all could see a little bit better. These are the two rooms that will be going next to the two in the addition. So what we can do is we can look at these now in context of the, the dollhouse. So if this is in a room with it, it's not going to be terribly out of scale, right? The ones I'm interested in seeing in that perspective are these three. So this, it's a little big. That one, it's a little, it's it's these flower clumps that make it quite so big, you know. But I mean, it's not terrible, right? And then we have this one. So this one does look like an oversized print, but it still looks okay in there. 
Um, and it would be going next to this yellow room here. So I think that would probably work. So I may, I may use that one. And then we have these ones here. So now if this were going to be a kitchen and we were going to use this with the different desserts and stuff on it, I think that's a bit large for it. It's too bad. It'd be really cute, but I think it is a bit large. And so I did come out here and check and I have not used any of these paper sets. So that part's cool. Um, so we have this green down here. This isn't too bad. That would actually be really nice for this bedroom up here too. See, I hate when I do this. Okay, we're going to put this here and we're going to put this here. So those are maybes. No, they don't fit together. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe they could both be. No, they can't. Okay. So for the kitchen, um, we can have this one here. This one looks really good. Um, and it's going off next to a blue, so it'll look nice. We've also got this. This is kind of cheerful kitchen paper, but then again, it's a mad scientist house, so it may be a little too cheerful, unfortunately. Um, of course, we've got this. Eh, it's a little too close in color to the stuff that we've got going on down in the dining room, I think. How about the damask? See, the damask would be better as a bedroom color. Okay, so now we've got three contenders for the bedroom. Um, and of course we've got the blue stripe, which again is a little too close to what we got going on here. So I think for the kitchen, this might be the way to go right here. So hey, at least we narrowed that down to one, right? Also, I mean, this isn't still, it's not completely off the table because it would be very cute, but yeah, I don't think it, just overall somatically, it really doesn't, doesn't go. I have to do it. Maybe I can do that in the next one. Um, so I think we're going to go with this is the main accent for possible kitchen, whatever room. I mean, this could be a study too, because I've got a really cool milliner's desk I'll have it together. But um, so, yeah, how many studies do you need? Well, enough until I run out of really cool furniture, I guess. But um, so this will be one of them for sure. And then it'll be one of these three. So I think I'm going to keep these three as contenders. And I'm going to look for some of the solid papers to go with it as accents and see if I can find ones. Because I may not be able to find anything that say matches these two, but I'll be able to match that one. So I think that's what we're going to do. So at least we got it narrowed down a bit. And now we can go back into the other room and start putting the addition together so we can see what it looks like in it. So we have finally got to the part where we're going to start putting stuff together. And they say on here to go from steps one one through nine without stopping don't stress me out or anything but um so i went ahead and read through them first right so um ideally you would put this together next to the uh, main house but actually this part right here the main house doesn't come into play until this stuff is um actually dry here after this step here which is step nine i think anyways it's going to be laying on its back, so having it next to the addition means nothing until you get to the next part, and that part you do. But anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this part. So step one is going to be to take the side here and see how much better the paint looks now. Um, it's still a little, could be a little better in places, but this is how it's going to be because my statute of limitations has expired on caring about that. Okay, so <laughs> we have this here. And so this is where the middle floor is going to go. And I was right. This is where the base floor is going to go. So one of the things they do is they have you check the fit and orientation. So here's our ceiling slash floor. Let me take this out because we know it's mid. Uh oh, what's this? Okay, good. <laughs> it's always something. Although there is a little paint on the floor. So. I'll have to do something about that in a minute. But anyway, so we're going to test fit this, make sure everything fits, and it does. And it's going to um, stick out a little bit. Can you see here on this? Right here, it's sticking out about, well, it's like an eighth of an inch or something, I would say. Um, so it's going to stick out an eighth of an inch on the front, which is going to be here for us because the siding for our addition is going to be on this side 
No, it's not. It's going to be this way for it. So that's the confusing part. So when it's open, the open side where you see all the stuff in, it's going to be flush. So that's actually going to be, yeah, here because we're going to have it like so where the, um, you know, this part's going to be to the right. The plain flat part's going to be to the left. So this part here is the part that's going to have to be flush to the front. Good to know. Okay. So we've got that piece there. That's fitting good. Where did my other piece go? Okay. So here's my base floor. Okay. And that's going to fit right in here like so. Same sort of thing. It's going to line up flush. The part where it's going to be open. Um, you know, as you glue these things, it's best to, to tape them anyway, but, um, mm, yeah, I think on this one, we'll put it together that way too. Okay. And then when we get those in place, we'll put this part on here and we will put the floor that goes at the bottom on here. So it's the nine inch one, which will be this one right here. So it's 503. That bottom one will go on first. So this one I'm going to put over here so I don't mix them up. I can take this off of here. Okay. So I have my different pieces. This one sit to the side. Okay. So you want this part to be the front of it here because we've got um, the part where it's open is going to be flush. The part where this front is going to sit on is going to stick out because that's what these grooves are going to grab onto, right? So, and we're going to want to tape it this way too. So I will put this, put this like this so y'all can see it. And this is another place, one, two, three blocks come in handy. So I'm going to put one there and one there. Voila, now this is standing up. Okay. We're going to lay it down first so we can get our wood glue on here. So with this, I just run a bead of it in there. Pretty generous one. What you want is when you stick the floors in, you want some glue to squish out. Because what that means is it's gotten up and around the sides. So I have my rag here so when it does, that it'll be fine. Okay, so this is this. This is going to be the front part where we look into. My floor is going to face up this way. And I'm going to place this in like so. And then I'm going to see how I got glue squishing out. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this glue. And I will wipe this glue. Where's my painter's tape? There it is. Okay, so you want to avoid putting painter's tape on that bit of floor if you can. So when you're doing a corner like this, let me scoot it up a little bit. Um, what you're going to want to do is, I'm going to have this up here, like so. Okay, so this is coming up like this, Oop. so that I can go around here and then under. Okay, keeping this at a nice 45 degree angle. Actually, you know what? Let's take our one, two, three blocks and use them for that. So I'll just put them on either side and squish it together so we know we've got a proper angle on that. We're gonna take another piece of tape and we're gonna put it over here on this side. We'll go like here on this part instead of that floor and same, kind of pull it here. We're just sort of anchoring it in two spots. And then getting this under. Okay. And again, this glue will kind of migrate out a little bit. So just keep an eye on it if you get more sneaking out. Okay, so we got our one, two, three blocks here. Perfect. Once we get this kind of on its back, um, and then when we get the top on, it'll keep this nice and straight. It'll keep the bottom one straight too. 
which is actually what we're going to do right now because I'm not going to try to turn this with that on there. So very carefully grab this. We're going to set this like this. And we're going to keep an eye on the joints. See, we've got this here doing this stuff coming out. Okay. So now we have our base here. So this is going to go obviously with the floor like that. And it's going to come up too. So we can put glue where and I covered my glue up. Are you right back here? Of course it is. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna put the glue here. It's a little trickier, of course, when you're going up and down. So this one, you just go ahead and spread it with your finger. It'll help. Just wanna make sure you got it. Don't, don't go stingy with your glue at this part, right? Because this is really the cement that's holding the whole thing together. Okay. And then when you get glue on the floor, as you inevitably will, wipe it off real quick. And then we're going to place this piece here. And we're going to push it nice and flush and square. And do the same with getting the glue off of there. Getting the glue off of here. There's not going to be a ton of it yet until we tape it. Okay. I gotta stand up for this part. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yes, just barely. Okay, so again, just like we did the other stuff, whatever I'm trying to pull into something is what I tape first, and then I pull nice and tight, and then come around, and you'll know it worked because glue will squish out all of a sudden, <laughs> which is fine. That's what we want. Okay, and I have another piece in the center. Press it down to that real good, and then pull. And bring it over. This is going to go all kinds of out of square while we're doing this. Don't worry about it. It's all good. And then same for this last bit here. I tape down and pull it nice and tight and tape it this way. And then get my glue off there. Okay. So now we've got these parts here. The thing that's going to help us a ton is this, <laughs> because once you put this on there, hopefully in the right direction, which is not what I did, um, there we go, it's going to hold these now straight, okay? Um, this and a combination of this piece, which you're not going to be able to see too well. I'll see if I can find a way to I better push this back a little bit. Kind of see. There we go. So take this off. This piece here is going to go in here. And it's going to be glued together on these two. I believe that is our next step. Right? Let's see. Da -da -da. Base floor. Do -do. Change this. Yes, nine inch tall liner. So the liner is going to go next, which works out nicely. So same thing. On here, we're going to put a little bead of glue. You know, you don't have to do these steps, I don't think, with any kind of lightning speed. I think they just don't want you to stop for a little bit and take a break or something. Because what will happen is if these floors aren't square, they'll dry, not square. And you definitely don't want that. So we got more on here. And then we'll Make that nice and level there. Okay, so since we're going to be wallpapering this side, that's the side that's going to go here, and the side we've painted black is going to go out. And this is going to be flush as well. Because this is our side that goes next to the wall. So this is going to be a little more challenging to put in place with tape, but not too bad. So I'll make sure you can... See, that kind of there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take this tape and I'm gonna put it there, making sure that's nice and straight and even. Yes, you're not supposed to put the tape on the wood floor, but you really can't not at this point. 
so we're just doing it. Okay, same with this. This out here. Pull it nice and tight. Once we get both of these on, then we're going to put a big piece that goes through both of them. Okay, so this here again, nice and straight. All right, and then we're going to do the same here. Start at the bottom on this one. Pull it nice and tight and over. And then you can reach in from the inside if you need to kind of realign it and get it nice and even here. The center one. Pulling that nice and tight and over. Same thing. Just keep checking, making sure that you're square. And then here, same thing. Okay, and now that we've got both of these, we're going to put a couple extra pieces that are going to span the whole thing. So we'll put this, stick that down real good. Grab this and pull nice and tight. Wow, a little too much tape on that side. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing here. Don't need quite as much tape as last time. Okay, and we're going to grab this and we're going to pull and put it down and you'll you'll know you're doing it right if you see just a teeny bit more glue squish out okay so i'm going to go back in here make sure we're good there i think i'm going to do one at the very bottom just because it's kind of want to to not cooperate okay so i'm pulling that nice and tight and there it goes and then we'll get this back on the table Okay, there we go. So I'm going to reach in, make sure we're nice and straight. And we're nice and straight. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's that part. So the next, this part is going to go on here. And if you've got everything straight, it'll all slot into place. Okay, and putting this side piece on like here, this is what's really going to bring this thing into square. Okay, so when we glue this on, we're going to glue this anywhere it's going to contact. So we're going to go along this edge here. We're going to go along this, along this, and along this little piece here. Make sure you guys can still see. I'm gonna give a second, I'll kind of move back up a little bit. Let's see if I can go up. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so let's start gluing. Put it all along these. Again, put a decent amount of glue. Try to avoid dripping it onto the floor every time I do that. Okay. I always miss and go over. Okay. So there's that. And then on this one, we're going to go ahead and like kind of smoosh the glue out. So it's nice and even. Like I said, this Gorilla Glue is very strong. It does a very good job of holding stuff. I mean, you know, ideally you don't want paint on it, but Gorilla Glue will hold it even if you painted it, for the most part. All right. And you can kind of scrape your finger off and put the glue back where it goes, kind of. Okay. And once we get this taped up real good, we'll kind of turn it over quickly to to get any glue that's squished out on our walls so we don't have a mess, but let's get this part on first and get it taped nice and secure. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got this flush to the front and to the back. All right. So we've got 
little bit of wiggle room here. There we go. Okay, so what I usually do, aside from get glue all over everything, is the first place I start taping is at my joints here. So here and here is where it meets it. So I'm going to do a piece here and I'll pull down nice and tight, straight down onto the side of the house. I'm going to do the same thing here. See if I got any glue squishing out in a little bit, wipe it off. And then I'm going to put a piece right here in the center. Because I'm going to do a couple pieces just like that one where it's spanning the entire thing. I had to make sure I didn't have any tape over there that I just glued into the house, and I didn't this time. Yay. All right. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to turn this around so I can see it from this side. Because you don't want to guess without things being in the right place. Okay. So like with this here. Same here. We've got a joint here. So we're going to grab this. We're going to pull down. Now, you'll notice there is an unpainted piece here, which is fine. This is what that trim is for. That trim is going to cover it, but we will paint it anyway, just to make sure. So let's get this nice and flush over this one. And it is. Wiping off any extra glue that's coming out. All right. And then we'll get this here. And we'll make sure these are nice and square and then bring it over. Do some extra tape on here. Again, each time you do this, just make sure it's right where it's supposed to be. And then press your, your tape down. I'm going to use a lot of tape, but I want this thing to be straight. You got you know, one shot at it being straight. Once it's glued together, you don't get to mess with it anymore. So there is that. All right, now for these, I'm going to pull this back a bit so you can see. I'm going to do ones that span the entirety of this as well. I'm going to stand up for that, though. Okay, making sure we're flat on there. That's all good. Pull and tape. And with that, you know, when you're pushing your tape on here, be careful you're not pushing in because then you're going to push your wall in. Okay, bring this down nice and tight. Same with this one. Okay, there we go. So, in theory, I should be able to take this and rotate it this way. There we go. And then get in here and get any extra glue off. You really, really need to do this step because if you don't, you're going to have extra mass. See right here on the floor. You don't want that glue to dry that way because then you know, your wallpaper is not going to fit. And that's not going to fit because you have this rigid glue. So usually I get in there with this and I have my fingernail here. I'll kind of scratch those areas just to make sure there's no extra glue bits. Okay, there we go. All right, so that should be fine to sit here and dry pretty much this way, that way. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Mm. What I do want to do, though, is I want to have, since I've got both of these now, I do want some pieces to span both of these joints as well, because I can already see... There's a little gap there. 
So I want to pull this and close that little gap. I'm going to do the same here. Just make sure it stays nice and square. Okay. So this mummified mass of tape and stuff is going to sit here overnight. And then I will be back um, tomorrow and we will take the tape off and we will continue with our instructions. See, even they say put a whole ton of tape on there. Um, and then what we'll do is uh, we'll probably assemble the rest of it next to the house because this is the part where they would have you glue it to the house. I'm not going to glue it to the house, but um, I do want to get you know it onto its base and then the roof on there next to the house so that that way I know they're going to line up really good. So that's what we will do. So I will be back tomorrow. All right, so that was um, part three. And so next time we are going to be um, dry fitting and, and retrofitting it basically against an existing built house. It was built without plan for the addition. So there's a couple extra steps in there. Um, and we'll fix the roof on, get that second wall up on there, all kinds of fun stuff. So I will see you in episode four. Okay, maybe it's Jeff. Bien crave. Bye.